Good afternoon. I'm Pastor Colleen Weirman with the Methodist Church in Kingsley, and here you are, and here's the church. <laughs> um, I'd ask you to silence your phones if you have your phone on you. I know sometimes we forget to do that. And I'd like to start with a greeting from the Gospel of John. These are Jesus' words. And he says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Friends and family, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we remember the life of Stephen Earl Krauss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow hope, and in death resurrection. Let us pray. O oh God, you have ordered this wonderful world and you know all things in earth and in heaven. Give us such faith that by day and by night, at all times and in all places, we may without fear commit ourselves and those dear to us to your never-failing love in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read a scripture that Steve had on his uh, a plaque on his wall that he absolutely loved. And it's from the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament. It's chapter 40, verse 31. This is God speaking through the prophet. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Stephen Earl Krauss was born February 20th, 1957 in Augsburg, Germany. I didn't know that. Steve's dad, Greg, was in the Army for six years, and so they moved around a lot, but eventually the family got back to Kingsley somehow. Steve attended Kingsley Area Schools until he was 17 years old. Steve, Dave McNair, Frank Reno, and Joey Dobson. I hope somebody, of one of you is here. They hung out after school, tinkering on cars. Then Steve's mom, Leona, told me a little story because I said, how was he as a student? He was an average student and he didn't get into too much trouble. Then she goes, although there was that one time. <laughs> Steve and his friends, so I don't know if it was Frank and Joey and Dave or who, and probably Dave, you know. So <laughs> Steve and his friend, they kind of broke into a cabin that, they, that didn't belong to them and they spent the night there. Leona didn't really remember how they got caught, but apparently they did. Sister Rhonda said, imagine a long-haired hippie freak. That would have been my big brother from the 70s. Steve entered the Navy at 17 years old, earned his GED, and worked as an aviation structural mechanic on the USS Midway. 
Steve would always write his mom letters and send his little sister Rhonda cool gifts from his travels. Rhonda said when she was 12 years old, Steve sent her a real kimono and yen from Japan. She loved her big brother and Steve loved his baby sister. Steve met his first wife, Connie Smith, while they were stationed in the Philippines. They fell in love, married, and had twin boys, Chad and Chris. When the boys were two years old, the family moved to Louisiana, where Steve taught his boys his mechanic trade. Chris and Chris and Chad uh, are both personal trainers. If you see them, they're like muscle guys. I think they're watching, so muscle guys. And um, But they, they had their dad's mechanic skill at restoring classic cars. Steve was very proud of both of those boys. Did you know that Steve loved tigers, but he hated panthers? There's a story behind that. The family shared that Steve was on an off-duty that day, walking around in the Philippines, and he saw a panther pop out into the road just ahead of him. Well, he turned and he ran. Probably not the smart thing to do, but he ran, and the panther ran after him, and apparently panthers are fast. So, but he got away from him. So he runs so hard, and finally the panther backed off, jumped back into the woods. Steve loved country music, and he loved to line dance. He taught line dancing lessons with his good friend, Ryan Dobry, at JR's Warehouse. Anybody remember JR's Warehouse? Yep. One night he was teaching line dancing at the Kingsley Inn when Patty Camello, that was your maiden name, right? Walked in and asked Steve to teach her to dance. Later he asked her for her phone number, but Patty already had it ready for him. Written down and ready to hand to him. The two dated for four years and they were married. Together, Patty and Steve had a beautiful daughter, Shannon. As Shana got older, she remembered going tent camping with her dad at Spring Lake. We'd go fishing, we'd just kick back, we'd enjoy nature. I loved camping with my dad. One thing Shana said she would miss most about her father was their daily chats. He would always, she said, give good advice to me. He was a safe, protective place for me to fall when life got too hard. Steve loved his kids and his nieces and his nephews. Rhonda said that her big brother would always go to her kids' birthday parties. One time when, is Brady here? Yes. Where's Brady? Hey, Brady. Don't you love that I called you out? It's like in high school. One time when Brady was seven years old, Steve wrapped up a gift for him. When Brady went to open it, he found out that his uh, uncle had put the gift in a girl's pink stroller box. So Brady refused to open it. He said, that's girly stuff. And somehow he had a little list back then, so I can't really do it. You can do it. I'm not going to open it because it's gooey stuff. It's gooey stuff. He wasn't going to open it. Well, eventually he opened it, and you guess what? He got lots of stuff. Tigers. Tigers. Tiger stuff. Not panther stuff. Tiger stuff. Niece Maddie remembered that she loved to tease her Uncle Steve. One time she saw Steve walk into the post office in Kingsley, but Steve didn't see her. So she snuck up on him and scared the daylights out of him. Which He, said he was a pretty tall guy. And he said to her, Jesus, Madison! <laughs> <laughs> Steve was a cat lover, as all of you know, right? He would love to feed all the stray cats in the trailer park, and he took in several black cats, because apparently, I didn't know this, but... Black cats are the hardest to rehome. So at one time, Steve had five black cats living with him. <laughs> he loved them all, especially Raven and Sammy, who were with him all the way to the end, laying on the bed with him. Steve was a faithful man of God. He went to the Fife Lake Baptist Church, and I said, well, they're guaranteed to get the Jesus in you. So <laughs> he went as a young boy, and then he attended a Southern Baptist Church, rich in tradition, with lots of singing and lots of amens. Steve was baptized at 49 years old at the Living God Church in Traverse City. When Steve was diagnosed with lung cancer a year and a half ago, he started reading his Bible even more than he did before. Daughter Shana said, my dad was a fighter, never giving up, even pointing me back to my faith in Jesus just days before he took his last breath. As I said, one of Steve's favorite verses is from the prophet Isaiah 40:31. So I'll read it again in the translation that most people hear it in. Then I'm going to read it in two other translations. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Here's another translation. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. And another translation. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. 
They will soar high on wings like eagles. So which is it? Do we wait on the Lord, trust in the Lord, or hope in the Lord? Yeah, all of the above. We wait, hope, and trust in the Lord, having confidence that God is with us in the middle of trials, in the middle of the sufferings, in the middle of cancer, in the middle of joys, in the middle of sorrows. How can we be sure? God makes a promise through this same prophet just a few verses before, saying, How can you say that the Lord does not see your troubles? Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all earth. He never grows weak or weary. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. God has promised that we will strengthen our faith when trials and sufferings come. Your dad had a very strong faith and stronger towards the end, witnessing to you and many other people from his bed. God has promised in his word that he will give us power, his power, when the fear comes and the anxiety begins to rise. God has promised that he holds us up with his powerful right hand when we just can't stand against that trial any longer. And God has promised to renew our strength in God, not only physical strength, but spiritual strength, so that we can soar on eagles' wings to a place of complete healing. Steve has soared to that place with Jesus where there is no more pain and no more tears, just peace and calm with his creator. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the strength you gave to Steve and the assurance that you were in control. May we all understand that faith is a gift from you, Lord. And when our faith is weak, your faith is always strong, providing help when we have no control, providing assurance that you are with us and that you are our God. In Jesus' name, amen. It's sharing time now, so think about a story. I'm going to start off with two um, readings, or actually stories, from his two boys, Chris and Chad. I'll start with Chris first. Chris writes, the first time I met my dad was when I was 16. I was so excited and it was almost too overwhelming, I think, for all of us. My first impression of him was he was this clean-cut and respectful man. This led me to want to know more about him, and some of my questions, unfortunately, never got answered. Although he was a man of few words, you could tell he was sensitive enough, even though he had this rough exterior. At the age of 22, I spent a year in Michigan to get to know my dad and his side of our family. I saw that my dad genuinely cared about me and Chad. He taught me how to fish, and he taught me more about cars. We both had Novas, you see, so that, for me, was our ultimate bond. It was exciting to have a father that loved cars just as much as I did. We both loved them and loved talking about them, and we would never miss a car show in Michigan. We had so much in common from music, exploring, road trips, classic cars, and of course, chocolate ice cream. He would even make Filipino food. He made a mean chicken adobo. What I enjoyed the most about our time together was having deep conversations and the fact that he really listened to me and gave me good advice. He once told me that family is everything and to be present. In the past few weeks, that has meant more and more to me. To spend more time with family and to forgive and forget are life lessons. Although he wasn't perfect, he really meant a whole lot to me. I greatly miss you and love you, Dad, and can't wait to learn more about you from friends and family. That's from Chris. From Chad. With the little time we did share together, I know how much love you had for me, and I will take that with me everywhere. Our common love for country music and muscle cars took our bond even further than I could have thought. I just wish I could have had more time with you. Even though you're gone, I know that your love for me will continue to live on in my heart forever. Love you forever, Dad. I will make you proud. I now have a guardian angel lighting my way. And so now we're going to hear from daughter Shannon. <clears throat>
to honor my father in words. It was never an easy task to capture someone in a speech. Originally, I planned to tell you all about how I've always been my father's favorite daughter. Hi, I'm Shana, Steve's only daughter. <laughs> but, as I think back through the memories, it's clear to me that I wasn't his only daughter. This is Atara. I asked her to come up here with me in case I needed someone to lean on, because she's more like a sister than a friend. And I know that my dad saw her as another daughter as well. One of my favorite memories was the three of us going camping in Five Lake. We also loved going to the Manton Parade. One time, he even helped me get ready for a night out. Atar and I loved to show him our dance team. Dance team routines have to practice over and over again. And he was always so supportive with unimaginable patience and grace. He never even better than I when I did my dance routine with a boot cast on my leg. He still cheered us on no matter what. <laughs> my dad always had a kind soul and a soft spot for the feline misfits that couldn't find anywhere else to belong. He welcomed them in with open arms and showed them the only love they have ever known. Honestly, after his service in the Navy, I think he came home to build an army of black cats. <laughs> So now it's time to share just a couple stories. Um, is there someone who'd like to share? I will bring the mic out to you. If there's someone that'd like to share a story, I'll just raise your hand and I'll run out to you. Anybody want to share? they wanted me to pass on one was from um, Dave McNair, who Steve ran with as a teenager, and they remained friends throughout the years. He wanted to bring to my attention, he said my mom probably would remember and laugh about it, but he and Steve, when they were younger, were out on one of the Mayfield trails by a creek, and Dave was sitting on the edge of the car, and Steve just reached over and gave him a biff out of the car and they fell into the creek and they went back and they told mom about it the next day and they said she was cracking up because of Steve being a prankster. And then at Cindy McNair's wedding, they were in a car and Dave had a drink. Steve looked over at him and floored the car and Dave said the drink, he wore it for the rest of the night all over and so Steve was always pranking him. And he said in the text to me, did you know your brother was OCD? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, we did. I used to cut his hair and I got fired, or I fired him as a client because I just couldn't cut his hair just the right way. He was very meticulous about his hair. Um, and 
Colleen spoke of Ryan Dobry with the line dancing, so I did reach out to Ryan, and she was sad to hear. Um, she herself has battled in the past, too, um, with illness and cancer in her family, and she said the first time she saw Steve dancing, she said he knew, he knew exactly what he was doing, and I enjoyed dancing with him. Um, and I know he did with her as well. They became good friends and did a lot of dancing. So um, that's what I had gotten from his friends on social media, people that were speaking of him, and so many condolences for the family and friends. So if you were one of them, and because you're here, we thank you. Are there any other stories that anyone would like to share? I don't really have any stories, but I know Steve loved his family and he loved his country, and I know he did love the black cat. And, um, you know, that's good enough for me. Rest in peace, Steve. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I know you have stories, but sometimes it's kind of hard to um, speak in front of everyone, so share them around the tables. Share them with the family after we um, do the military honors. I'm going to go ahead and um, have you listened to a song he loved? I Can Only Imagine. It was one of the family's favorites, so we'll listen to that now.
Let's pray. Receive back into your arms your child, Stephen Earl Kraus, and grant that increasing in knowledge and love of you, Lord, he may go from strength to strength in service to your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's now for the time for the military honors. <coughs> We are your honor guard, and it is our honor to be here on this day and at this time. We represent the veterans of foreign wars, post 2780 in Traverse City, and the American Legion, post 35. Our United States Ar uh, Navy is here today. They, will, uh, they are the honor guard, and they will be presenting our nation's flag. Our buglers today are Mike Hunter and David McIntosh. My name is Dan Kirkwood, and I'm a veteran from the Navy in the 50s and 60s. 
Today, we are here to honor and to pay our respects to Mr. Stephen E. Krauss. He was a Navy agent, structural mechanic, petty officer. Steve entered uh, the Navy active duty on 12 July 1974 after his basic training at the Great Lakes Naval Training Center in Illinois. Steve attended A schools in aviation structural repair and maintenance as well. This training was for both shore stations as well as shipboard. His job was to maintain and repair and align all aircraft structural parts, fabricate sheet metal as wings, elevators, ailerons, rudders, fuselage structures, all rubber and tubing systems as well. His rate in my day, and I believe it still holds true today, is kind of a, um, it's called a military occupation status, it's kind of critical when you think about what he had to do and how he had to do it and so on and so forth. There's a, a lot of things there with all the fabricating that had to be done. He was assigned aboard the aircraft carrier, the USS Midway. She was a CV, her hull number was a 41, where his training was exemplified in taking care of approximately 100 aircraft on that ship. Steve served abroad on sea duty for two and a half years at least. And then when he thought maybe everything was uh, going to be out of the way and he was not sure what he was going to do, the Navy Department decided they sent him a letter. The letter was dated on the 11th of June, 1978. And he was extended now for another 23 months. And it says, at the convenience of the government. Steve's last duty station was Naval Air Station in Memphis, Tennessee. Steve received these awards the Navy Unit Com Combination Ribbon, the Air Forces Expeditionary Ribbon, National Defense Service Medal. We know he was a good boy because he received two copies of the United States Navy's Good Conduct Medal. By the way, the Midway, his ship, is now docked in San Diego, California. She is a museum ship. To serve under the flag of this nation is a privileged duty of every able-bodied American. And we have come here today to pay our final respects to Steve, who had the privilege to do so and to honor his service to our country. Proudly we remember his service because men and women like Steve, that we do live in a land of freedom, peace, and justice. So may our ceremonies of today deepen our reverence and respect for Steve, our honored comrade friend and our loved one. 
it was because of men and women like Steve who, when they served, had a creed in which they followed and they lived by. It is the same creed that the sailors of today enjoy. It's called the Sailor's Creed. And it goes like this. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. And I will obey all lawful orders of those appointed over me. I represent the fighting spirit of the United States Navy and all those who have gone before me to defend freedom and democracy around the world. I am committed to excellence and a fair treatment of all. And I will be professional. I will wear my uniform with pride and accepting the responsibilities for my actions. I will set excellence as my standard and I'll always strive to make me a better sailor and my crew a better crew. I am a United States sailor. There's a saying in the Navy, Steve would know this one very well, Age gray and underway, and if it doesn't move, paint it. If it does move, you better salute it. Semper Fortis, always strong. Remember this, a veteran, whether entering the military service, for reserve duty or active duty. They do sign a blank check. And this check is made payable to the United States of America for the sum of and up to, including their life. We believe that Steve is now in the hands of our Heavenly Father, the Supreme Commander and the Judge of all, who give us his beloved sleep, and we may be comforted by the blessing and assurance that Steve, our comrade, friend, and our loved one, is truly at rest in God's eternal peace, and he abides in a place where all burdens are lifted, and there is no more sickness, there is no more pain. So let us pledge ourselves anew and pick up the banner laid down by Steve. We are to continue his march to face the challenges that confront us in this life, to provide support, protection for all those left behind. So let us so live. When the keeper of eternal records shall have called our names for the last time, <coughs> those we leave behind may say of us, as we now say of Steve, here lies all in the world of a true hearted comrade and a fearless defender of his flag. At this time, we will have a rifle salute, <coughs> followed by taps, and a presentation of our nation's flag. We treat the taps, the sound of the playing of taps, as we would our national anthem. So I'd like to have you rise when that time comes. I'll, I'll give you the, the, the okay there. And then, uh, if you are a veteran, please, please, render a salute for Steve at that time. Under guard detail, post.
mais. Please be seated. United States, United States Navy, and a grateful nation. Please accept this flag as a symbol of appreciation for the most honorable day for you, sir. There are many traditions observed at military funerals. The folding of the flag, the rifle volleys, the playing of taps. They all have significant meanings. The rifle volley date back to the days of the Napoleonic Wars. Each side would conduct a ceasefire. They would then 
care for their wounded and their dead. Today, after the three volleys you have heard, we'll be placing three of the brass shell cases in your flag. This is a remembrance of Steve. But we are to carry on in this life. I would like to now pipe Steve over the side. <clears throat> it's a tradition in the Navy. It goes a long way back. United States Navy, Petty Officer, Steve E. Krauss. Now hear this. Departing God bless each and every one of you for being here today on Steve's behalf. God bless America. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. That concludes the military portion. For your service. Thank you. Receive the benediction. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The family has invited you down to a luncheon downstairs. I'm going to have you remain seated. The funeral home will come up and dismiss from the front row. I'm going to go ahead and say a prayer. For the food, so you can go ahead and please start eating. Don't wait for the family. They're going to say their final goodbye. So please start eating the food while it's hot. So will you pray with me? God, we give you thanks for Steve's life and the memories that will be shared around the table in a few minutes. May each story bring peace and comfort to the family. Thank you, God, for blessing the food in the hands that have prepared it. Help us to remember that you tell us to not be afraid because you are with us even until the end of the age. In Jesus' name, amen.